now we're going to talk about God's law and government versus human law and government to give a sense of how we can help differentiate and pull out of our view of God and the heavenly government these distortions that human governments um, apply in the way they run and how they have entered Christianity and caused us in many ways to see God running his universe no differently than a Caesar runs Rome. We want to pull that out of our view and see, see things as most clearly as we can. So how do you see God and his law? That question, come back to it over and over again. You will find in discussions with people, you start with this question as they, they come up and say, well, tell, I want to talk to you about the, why did Jesus have to die? I say, well, how do you understand God's law? Well, well do you believe in, in the, uh, the, uh, the, um, um, the punishment for sin? Well, well, how do you understand God's law? It will all come back to that question. And so if you start with that, and this is going to start us really applying this principle of design law. And, and for those who haven't heard me say this before, let me put it in this way. God is the creator. He builds space, time, energy, matter, life. And thus his laws are those laws upon which reality are built. He is the designer. Do you see him as designer? Or do you see him as dictator? Designer, the laws upon which you're already built, laws of gravity, laws of physics, laws of thermodynamics, the law of love, law of worship, law of liberty, law of exertion, all these design protocols, constants. Is that how you see our creator and God and his law and his government? Or do you see him no different than we, we see ourselves? See, you, I, and any human being, we can't create space, time, energy, matter, life. We can't build reality. We can't do it. We're not creators. So we make up rules. We call those rules laws. And then we threaten to punish people who break them. That's human law. God's laws are not like that. His ways are higher than our ways. Two types of law, the design law versus the imposed law. I'm going to throw in a little question that I received. Somebody sent one in. I can slide it in right here so I don't have to do it in question and answer time. Somebody said, why do you use design law versus natural law? Aren't they the same? And they are the same if you understand design laws or those laws created by the creator that his universe is built upon. Yes. But the reason I don't use natural law, I actually did when I first started this, uh, this way of, of, of talking to people, I, I actually for a short period of time used natural law. But I discovered that that term natural law is also used by people who don't believe in God at all to have a naturalistic explanation for the universe. And therefore, it led to some confusion that I was trying to maybe teach a godless origins of the universe. So I uh, deleted the term and the use of, of natural law, and I now use design law because the design law requires a designer. And so that's why I, I changed that term in the way I present it. So design law, law of love is, is the, the ultimate overarching law. Imposed law, think imperial Rome. And think how a Roman Caesar imposes law. And that's imperial, rules over. If you violate design law, those violations are incompatible with life. And you can think through all the examples, the physical laws of health. If you violate imposed law, don't pay your taxes. Do 30 in a 25 zone. Walk on the grass. If you violate imposed law, it's not incompatible with life. Violations of the design law require the designer, God, the creator, to heal, to fix, to restore. If he doesn't act, if God just sits back and takes no action, death happens to those who violated the law. So it requires God's John 17, 3. He did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God is acting not to condemn, but to save and to heal. Because his creation is now out of harmony with how he constructed it to operate. It's violation of his law, violation of his law. Violations of human law, though, and Poe's law, require the ruling authority to inflict punishment, to impose death, lest unpunished rebellion ensue. 
I want you to notice the difference in the two. That's why it comes back to it over and over again. How do you understand law? Design law. Christ's mission, if you understand design law, was to destroy sin and sinfulness, to destroy Satan. Remember, by his death, he destroyed him and holds the power of death. That is the devil, Hebrews 2.14. And to, and to restore mankind to righteousness, eternal life, reconciliation with God, to destroy sin, destroy sinfulness, destroy the devil, and to restore mankind. That's his mission. Under imperial law, it's taught that Christ's mission was to pay a legal penalty to God, the ruling authority, to appease or assuage God's wrath and, and to propitiate his wrath. Under the design law, the problem that needs fixing is sin in man. Remember our original diagnosis. God didn't get changed. God's law didn't get changed. The condition of man got changed. So the problem is in us. We have a condition that needs fixing. The problem is sin in man. But under the imperial Roman view, the problem is God's angry. He got offended. He's agitated. He's wrathful. He's upset. His righteousness couldn't handle the offense to his infinite self. And so something had to be done to assuage that wrath. Problems in God. The design view, I believe, is the true view of God. And the imposed view is the pagan view of God. Two ways to wield power. The design law view that Jesus demonstrated God's way or the imperial way. Notice in John 13, when Jesus, all power was given to Christ, he gets up and washes dirty feet. He also used power to heal the sick, to feed the hungry, to, and he served. Notice the one with all power, the ruler, uses his power to build up and uplift Imperial uses power over others to impose laws and penalties demanding service. We are taxed to support the ruler. Notice, uh, I don't have it in the slides, but you can pull into your brain from Isaiah where Lucifer rebelled and he wanted to ascend to the Most High. He wanted to go up. He wanted to rule over. Jesus in Philippians did not think equality with God was something to be grasped, but humbled himself all the way into the form of a servant. Notice the, the methods of Satan and Satan's governance. And you'll look in the human beastly systems of the world. It's always a ruling elite exploiting and oppressing the masses. Throughout all human history, the pharaohs and their slaves and the masses, the emperors in, of Rome and, and, uh, and, and ancient China, in Japan, and in the, in the nation states with the divine rights of the, of the um, aristocracy to rule. But there's always a mass of people being enslaved, abused, exploited, living in poverty in order to sustain the elevated aristocracies. God's way is the ruling authority gives of himself, sacrifices of himself to up, build up the hungry, to build up the disenfranchised, to build up, uh, to set free the slaves, to bind up the brokenhearted. And Christ came and gave of himself for our restoration. It's the exact opposite in governing methods. Jesus and God win the heart with love. He wins us because he loves us and he gave himself for us. Imperial systems demand obedience through fear of punishment. If you don't obey me, I will be forced by righteousness, by the, the, the holiness of the law, to kill you, to torture you, to punish you if you don't obey me. Some will go as far as to say, if you don't love me, I will be forced to kill you. And that's, by the way, inconsistent with the law of liberty, inconsistent with the law of love. It doesn't work. It suspends reason. It damage your, damages your capacity for understanding. And so you will then create new philosophies that damage you further. Like, well, God's ways aren't my ways. I just take that on faith. I don't think about that. And the blind start leading the blind. Jesus and God leave us free. Present truth and love and leave us free. Because love only grows in freedom. We have freedom in God's kingdom. Imperial systems coerce us. You better or else. 
God's system is open and truthful. Remember Jesus when he was brought in for this trial? Why are you bringing me in in secret? I did everything in the open. I did nothing in secret. When you have the truth on your side, you have nothing to hide. It's the liar and the deceiver that has to operate in secret. Human governments, they're all open and honest, aren't they? <laughs> Secretive, deceptive. This is how the systems of the world work. Think about how Jesus operated on the Sabbath. He healed other people. He delivered people, set them free from the oppressions of their bodies or whatever was going on with them. But those who were operating under rule system, hey, it's the Sabbath, we gotta keep the rules. You better quit healing those people, Jesus, because we have a law and we know you're breaking it. And if you don't stop uh, breaking our law, then we're gonna stone you because we're gonna be righteous to the Lord because we love him. Impose systems. Woman caught in adultery, dragged out in front of Jesus. How did Jesus respond? Neither do I condemn you. Now, this is quite profound. It's a quite profound story. This is grace in action again. It's like Adam in Eden when he said, who told you you're naked? In this particular case, Jesus disperses the crowd and after all those who were accusing her and trying to trap Jesus are gone, it's just him and the woman. Jesus says to her, where are your accusers? What's in the question? I'm not accusing you. I'm not condemning you. And understand why he's not condemning. Is he, is he not condemning? And see, the, the people under the imperial view, they, they struggle here. He has to. She is committing adultery. She was caught in the very act. It's transgression of the law. If you're going to be a righteous judge, if you're going to be a righteous ruler, you are required to sustain the authority of the law. You have no right to not condemn her. You must condemn her. This is the imperial view. This is what the, the Pharisees wanted them to do, wanted him to do. But Jesus doesn't operate on human law systems. He's the creator. He says to her, neither do I condemn you because I don't have to. If you had not been caught, if you would have snuck home today like so many other days, you would have gone home with your head hung low. You would have gone home inside your own mind under a cloud of guilt, condemnation, shame, fear, self-loathing, inadequacy, guilt. You would, have been, you would have been damaging yourself because you were operating out of harmony with how I made life and relationships to operate. I don't condemn you. I love you. I want to restore you to health. Go and sin no more. Go and live in harmony with how I built life to operate. Relationships. To operate. Stop hurting yourself this way. This is design law. It's reality. But the imposed imperialistic Pharisees wanted the woman stoned and punished for her disobedience. Those who disagree under design law, we present truth and love and we simply leave them free. Every person should be fully persuaded in their own mind, Romans 14, 5. Under imposed law, though, those who disagree, oh, oh, no, 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 they're heretics. They're heretics. We need to imprison them. We need to torture them. We need to kill them. We need to ostracize them. Remember the dark ages? We love our enemies. We give our life for others. Greater love is no man that he lay his life down for a friend. No, no, under imposed law, we have to kill our enemies. We go on a crusade. We put a cross on our clothing and we go out and kill people who believe different than we do. And we call ourselves righteous and we tell people that we will have a special place in heaven. We sacrifice ourselves for others under the design law. Under imposed law, we demand that others serve us. Under design law, we turn the other cheek. Under imposed law, we actually have violence against our families. I don't know if you know the data, but the data shows that in Christian homes, there's no difference in child abuse rates and spouse abuse rates in Christian homes and non-Christian homes. 
Why is that the case? Because most Christians are worshiping an imperial dictator, not a designer who created the universe to operate in love. Most all Christianity across all denominations, and it does not matter, this is not a denominational thing, have been infected with this idea that God's law functions like human law, and therefore justice requires God to use his power to punish disobedience. And by beholding, we become changed. We become like the God we admire and worship. And when you worship an authoritarian dictator, you become more dictatorial. And therefore, it is righteous for me to punish those in my family who are disobeying and not keeping the rules. And abuse rates are no different in Christian homes and non-Christian homes. Think about reaching the lost. I love this example because I'm going to give you an example of somebody who's breaking the design laws and the human laws, imposed laws, breaking them both. And notice the consequence and how the person responds. We're going to talk about an IV heroin user who has been using dirty needles. And from his use, he's got endocarditis, infection of his heart. He's really sick. Now, he has been breaking the design laws, the laws of health. Everybody agree? But he's also breaking the imposed laws because it's illegal to use that substance. So he's breaking both types of laws, right? Does this individual want to be taken before the magistrate? and have his deeds of law-breaking told to the judge and uh, have the judge pronounce judgment upon him and sentence him? Does he, wanna, what does, does he likely want to go there? No, and if he did go there, wouldn't he hire an advocate, uh, a mediator, uh, someone to stand between him and the judge and plead his case? Does it sound like any Christianity you've heard? But does this same individual who's been breaking the design laws and he's sick because he's dying of the condition that, he's, that he has, does he want to be taken to the doctor? And the doctor hears the history. The deeds and the misdeeds are told to the doctor, but then the doctor goes far beyond the judge. The doctor begins to penetrate deep into the secret recesses of his being, looking for every defect he can find, echocardiograms, MRIs, looking for every possible defect. And the doctor pronounces sentence on him, excuse me, judgment on him, which you call that a diagnosis. The doctor diagnoses him. You have endocarditis and you're dying. And then he pronounces the sentence. And here is the remedy, the treatment plan. Here is what I recommend for you. And he sentences him with his therapeutic treatment. Does he likely want to go there? Yes. You see, when we present Christianity in an imperial imposed law model, we put obstacles up in front of people. People don't want to go to God. They want to create theologies that are designed to hide them from God. We have an advocate that stands between us and God pleading, my blood, my blood. We're covered with the robe of righteousness. We have all these things that are designed to hide us from God because we don't trust him. That would be like going to your doctor with endocarditis you know something's really bad. You've got fevers 105. You're really sick. And when you go in, the doctor comes in to examine you. You go, here, here's my healthy brother. Examine him. And whatever you find right, put it in my record. That's what this imperial construct leads to. Irrational, crazy stuff. The truth is, we go to God and we pray like David in Old Testament times. And David in Old Testament times say, Father, search me and see the wicked way in me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. We need to go to God knowing that he is our creator, our designer, and the problem is our condition, and that he has a solution, and he can fix it. That's what we need to do, and that's design law presentation. So what is biblical justice, if you understand now justice? Well, biblical justice and the word justice, of course, justice is defined or determined by the law. So in Germany, we were in Germany earlier, uh, or last year, you know, you can drive on the Autobahn as fast as you can go. And it's just a right to do so. They don't have speed limit there. And we got up at least 60 miles an hour. <laughs> but it's unjust to drive as fast as you can go in America. It's just a right to punch somebody in the face in a boxing round, match. It's unjust to do so in a soccer match. Justice is determined by the law. And so again, when you say biblical justice, the first question you ask is, what law lens are you looking through? And under design law, notice what the Bible tells us justice is. 
Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Psalms 82, 3. Wash your feet. Wash yourself clean. Stop all this evil I see you doing. Yes, stop doing evil. Learn to do right. See that justice is done. The right thing. The just thing. Help those who are oppressed. Give orphans their right and defend widows. Isaiah 1, 16 and 17. The Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. The Lord is the God of justice. Isaiah 30, 18. By doing what? Grace and compassion is just and right. This is what the Lord says to the dynasty of David. Give justice each morning to the people you judge. Do, what, what, what's the next sentence? Help those who have been robbed. Rescue them from their oppressors. Jeremiah 21, 12. Biblical justice is delivering the oppressed, not punishing the oppressor. Punishing the oppressor is human justice. God's justice is delivering, healing, restoring, saving those who are being damaged by sin. Why is this biblical justice? Because God's laws are design laws. He does not have to use power to inflict pain and suffering on people who break them because that's inevitable and unavoidable if he does nothing. You can't avoid the pain, suffering, and damage from breaking God's law, from transgressing it, from violating it. So key learning points. Use the integrative evidence-based approach. Make your understanding of scripture harmonize with God's design laws. Always start by asking what law lends. Governments are built on imposed rules we call laws of our various societies. Human governments are built on the imposed laws. God's government is built on design laws, protocols upon which life are designed to operate. Human laws are imposed, God's are designed. Justice is defined by the law. Design law, justice is healing. Imperial imposed law, justice is inflicting punishment. Teaching that God's laws are like human laws distorts God's character, incites fear, undermines trust, and obstructs the plan of salvation. 